Hi, I'm Carrie from Dendriad Art and Press for Design and I'm going to show you how to draw this Celtic style mandala today. I will just show you how to do the drawing. You can colour it in yourself however you want later on, but I thought I'd show you my little finished piece so you can uh, have a look and see what we're working towards today. So this is going to be probably a fairly advanced class, but I'm going to do it in real time so you can follow me along with me as I actually draw and of course at any time that you need to you can just pause and rewind and go over any stages that you need to have another look at. So the materials we're going to need today are a piece of A5 paper and make sure it's a nice paper because uh, you want your finished design to be on something nice. A5 is 148 millimeters by 210 millimeters. You're going to need a ruler, pencil, a uh, fine liner pen. I'm using Faber Castell uh, um, artist pit pens. You can also use Uniball pin pens as well. And those are the ones that I like. Uh, a protractor, a rubber, or if you've got one, a putty rubber. They're really great for, especially when doing Celtic designs, and a pair of compasses. I'll put all the uh, materials that I'm using in the detail description below as well so you can uh, go over those. Right, so we're just going to quickly find the centre of our piece of paper by taking a ruler and placing it from point corner to corner. And just put a little line down the centre there and then corner to corner the other way of the paper. And just a little centre mark there as well. So I'm going to draw my guidelines. Um, I'm going to draw them quite thickly so that you can actually see them nicely on the screen. But I would suggest that you draw your guidelines nice and lightly so that you can differentiate between the guidelines and the actual lines of our drawing. So we're going to start off drawing the outer uh, guidelines of the mandala and you want to set your pair of compasses to six centimeters. I'm putting the point in, just draw yourself a nice guideline. So as I say, mine's going to be quite thick so you can see it on the screen. So once that's been drawn, we're going to take a ruler and just draw a horizontal line right through the middle of our mandala circle. And then from that horizontal line, we're going to place our protractor. Try and get it as central as possible. It's a bit hard with this protractor because of the way it's drawn in the middle, but I think I've got it just about center. And I'm going to mark off every 20 degrees. So just a little line at every 20 degrees. And then I'm going to flip that round and continue on the other side. Again, just marking off every 20 degrees. And then once that's done, we're going to join up opposites all the way around. So it's starting from the horizontal line. I'm just going to put in lines all the way around. And again, these lines for you, I would suggest doing them quite lightly.
Okay, so that's our first set of guidelines put in. Now we're going to put a central circle in for first set of guidelines for the actual drawing. Now this radius wants to be one centimeter. So set your compasses to one centimeter. Just about there. There we go. And I always find drawing circles at this small radius is quite hard. So just take it slowly. I always find that the compasses tend to just jump and jump out. So slow is best. There we go. That wasn't too bad. And then that's the first guideline set up. So the first element of the mandala that we're going to draw are these leaf-shaped sections here. You can see six of those. So we're going to draw all of those. And we're going to start off from the horizontal line. So that horizontal line that's going across, if you just turn your paper around so that that's vertical now, it would be a little bit easier for us to work with. And this is the first section that we're going to work with. We're going to draw a leaf shape and the start of the leaf shape is going to be on this intersection between the six centimeter line and this vertical line. And the end of the leaf shape is going to be at the intersection between the one centimeter line and the vertical line. And we're going to actually bring it out from the, maybe I'm starting from the bottom as you can see, bring it out to around the center of the next adjacent line and bring it back in again. So repeat that on the other side so that you've got a nice leaf shape. Now we're going to miss out two to the right. So two of these lines, we're going to miss two out and we're going to work on the third one. It's going to be exactly the same process, moving from one intersection to the next intersection and touching the lines adjacent to it. And repeat that, I'm going to miss out one, two, so this is going to be number three. You don't have to get your pencil lines absolutely perfect because I always find that when it comes to actually adding the fine line later on, then you can refine all the different lines. So I miss out one, two, number three. Miss out two again, work on number three. And the final one, miss out two, sorry, miss out two, and then work on number three. And there we go, we've got our six petal shapes. I'm going to move that back so it's back to where it originally was with the two petal shapes and the horizontal line in this position. Right now we're going to draw two more guidelines. The first guideline is going to be three centimeters in radius. And then the next guideline is going to be four and a half centimeters in radius. Now we're going to draw in these outside petals, I think I will call them. And we're going to start off quite simply. So you've got your two leaf shapes here. We're going to work on this left hand. We've got two spare um, guidelines here. So we're going to work from the left hand one first. 
and we're going to draw a pencil line from the intersection of that left hand one down to the adjacent intersection on the 4.5 centimeter line that we've just drawn and make it a slightly curved line just to represent a petal shape and then we're going to repeat that on the other side so now we've got one petal shape there and we're going to move to our next free guideline and we're going to do exactly the same we work from the four sorry the six centimeter intersection line down to the 4.5 one and then do the same on the opposite side and repeat so we're going to repeat that pattern all the way around all of these free guidelines And there's the final one done. Okay. So from this position, we're going to start work. Again, just start from this left hand petal here. So we've got again, if you just orientate your paper so that your two petals on the horizontal line are here. And then if we work up to the top, we've got this left hand petal here. So now we're going to continue. As you can see, we've got the right hand side of this petal has come down towards the 4.5 line and the adjacent line. Now we're actually going to continue this particular line down to where the intersection of the three centimeter line is and the adjacent guideline. So we're just going to bring that down there and now you can see that naturally this line just wants to join up with this one here so we're just going to do that and it's basically going from the three centimeter guideline intersection up to the four and a half centimeter guideline intersection the next one so if we follow that along the next one we're actually going to miss out so this one is just going to stay where it is it intersects here and it comes up to this petal so that's just we're just going to leave that as it is and now this line we're going to take up to this intersection so we're going to work from here to the three centimeter line and now you can see that that three centimeter line wants to go up to this 4.5 centimeter line just to finish off that bit of petal okay so following around with my pencil we come round. you can see that that's already joined so we don't want to do anything there come back up and then this one's open and empty so we're going to move that one down to the three centimeter guideline and you can see now that that wants to go up and join that line together okay so now we're going to start from the right hand petal and we're going to follow it around so you can see here it's fine it's already joined up to a line so we're not going to go anywhere we're going to come back up here we come down and we can see that it's an open line so we need to close this off so we're going to move from the 4.5 line down towards the adjacent three centimeter and intersection and then bring that up to join up there. Carrying along, we move along with our pencil. You can see that that's joined up, so that's fine. 
come along and we've got an open line here so we want to close that one off so that one goes down to that intersection and up to the next to close that off following it along still that's fine and then you've got a final one to close off okay so we're almost done with our guidelines the final guideline that we want to put in is the one that's going to denote this circle in the center here and it's a bit of an awkward measurement this one as it wants to be 2.3 centimeters so let's see yeah just about there Okay, and then we're going to draw that final guideline in. Okay, so now we're going to start work on drawing the double lines for our mandala. So if I put them side by side, hopefully you can see the correlation between the mandala drawn here and the lines that we've got so we're going to start off first of all by doing the um, the leaf petal shapes I think that's the easiest one to do so all of the guidelines all of the lines that we've drawn here so this leaf petal shape for instance they denote the actual outside line of everything that we've drawn so you'll see what I mean when we start filling it in. So we're going to start off with these petal shapes first of all. And I'm going to draw just a kind of rounded leaf shape at the top and then quite narrow at the end. And I'm just going to repeat that. So you basically got sets of parallel lines all the way around and you're drawing on the inside. Again, don't worry about the perfectness of your lines right now because when we're going to add the fine liners, you can always refine those. Okay, so that's the six petal leaves done. Now we're going to do all the outer leaves. So these ones here. So I'm just going to start from the base here. And again, remember that these are the outer lines, so we want to draw inside of these. And again, I'm just going to curve off the top of those lines, coming a bit narrower. And you just follow this line all the way around. the beginning and then repeat on the next set You can see our mandala starting started to take shape now. And the final one we're going to do is this little petal shape in the center. So this is the outer line. So we'll work from this center line into 
the spare space and then back to the next adjacent center line. So I'm going to work from here, so this is the outer line, work from here, do a little V shape almost down and then up into the next center line. And you're basically wanting enough space in between, if I show you on my original one, enough space in between so you can definitely show your unders and overs in between each petal. Okay, so again working from the center of that V down into the space and back up again. There we go, and that's our final bit of drawing for all the outside. I'm just going to define this a little bit more so you can see it more clearly on the screen. That's the outer 2.3 centimetre line. There we go. So now it comes time to rubbing out your line. So I'm going to do the unders and overs of the Celtic woven design first. So the easiest way to do this is actually with these partic this particular design anyway is to do each of the unders and overs for each of the petals and actually once we've done all of the petals we've done all of the unders and overs all around the whole mandala so instead of going from here to here to here to here and working them out if we just take each petal at one time then it actually works out quite nicely for this particular design at least and one thing to say is that every petal is exactly the same so if you take a look at this petal the top intersection of the petal goes over and then the next one goes under over and then on the left hand side under over under and then that repeats so next petal exactly the same right hand side top starts you in over over under over then under over under so that repeats exactly the same on each one so this is where putty rubber comes in really handy because unlike normal rubber where you tend to rub off all your corners a putty rubber you can actually make it into a nice point and then you can get into all of the little areas that we need to be in for Celtic knot designs so I'm going to start with this petal here and taking it from the top right hand intersection this is going to be an over which means I'm going to rub out those two little lines there and if the rubber does go over which it probably will do just define those with your pencil so you can see that that intersection now looks as if it's going over the little intersection underneath it next one's going to go under because that's the one's gone over so i'm actually going to rub out these two lines here again just define it if you need to okay and then because that's gone under follow it around this one's got to go over So because that one's gone over, we follow it around, this one's got to go under. Next one's got to go over. And the final one's got to go under. So we follow that petal all the way around just to make sure that we've got everything right, which I like to do because sometimes you can get yourself confused. So starting from the top, coming down the right hand side, we've gone over, under, over, under, over, under. Great, that's done. So move to the next one and it's going to be exactly the same. So over, 
on the over on the over on the and then I just like to define them. to the next. Same again. Start from the top right hand, over, under, over, under, over, under. Just move around so each of those petals are done. You will see we've got a couple more just to rub out on the uh, other petals, but it's only a couple, so it's not too bad. So again, starting from the top right hand side, you start with an over. See, I've done that wrong. That's fine. I'll just go back and rub. And go back to your previous. So that was under. So this one's got to be over. At the end of each petal, just remember just to check all the way around. Just make sure everything's over, under, over, under, over, under. That's the last of the petals done. So that leaves us with just a couple more to sort out, but only one, as you can see, it's the one that's in the center of all the double petals all the way around here. And it'll actually be going exactly the same way for each one of them. So if you go to your previous one of, uh, on either side, both of these are overs, so that means that's gone over and that's gone over, which means that this particular line here has to look like it's gone under, which means that we're going to take out those two lines, so that's gone over 
and then you can check that that's right because then that one goes over and to the side of it that goes under and here it goes under as well so that's right so it's actually going to be exactly the same all the way around so if you move to your next intersection which is here that one again is going to be looking like it's an over from there okay and then you can always just go back and check and go right well that one goes under there that goes under there and then from underneath that goes over and that goes over so you can just always check on both sides okay let's move around so i find the next one which is here that's going to be in the same direction And just check with either side that that's fine and then my next one is here oh i have missed one out i've missed two out that's fine There's one there you'll be a bit more careful than i am <laughs> So we finally have our design for all the ups and downs and we're going to fine line that now. So as I say, I like to use Father Castell pit pens um, and I also use reusable fine line pin pens as well. So both fine. I'll probably use uh, an S size or maybe even F actually no I think I'll use an S and then I'll probably use a point two of the uni pin. So this is where when I'm doing the fine line then this is where I like to just make sure that my lines are a lot more smoother obviously. Um, so I just pick a point and start and then just I always just stop just before an intersection because I want to make sure that when I've come back around I've got a little bit of wiggle room there in case I want to just change the angle of the other intersection and again same as I come back out I just sort of stop start sorry on the other side just with a little bit of space okay so this bit I think I am going to speed up and then you can fine line yours um, and then join me at the end of the speed it up section. So once everything's fine lined, next step is to rub all your lines out, which I'm going to do. I'll speed that section up again and then I'll talk to you a little bit about extra decoration. Okay, once all your guidelines are rubbed out, You'll inevitably find, as I always do, that there's little sections that you've just missed out. So go around and tidy those up. And then you can add some extra decoration. So you'll see on my original design that I've gone round with extra lines in the centre of each of my um, parallel lines. So you can do that, you could do little dots, you could do any um, doodling that you'd like to do. So it's entirely up to you how you decorate the centre of yours. I'm going to just continue again and do the lines. Um, so what I like to do is maybe have a double line in the wider areas and a single line just in the thinner areas. So that looks something like this, just bring the thinner line up and then from that I kind of pretend that it's broken off underneath and then I bring it down again pretend that it's sort of broken off underneath into two lines and then bring it down and join it up around about there and then I just continue that all the way around and the same goes for the petals just have a single line 
down here over the leaf shapes single line down here and then just let it break up at the top like so and then for the center circle I just put a line just all the way around that follows that edge and then in each of the little pointed areas I just bring a little triangle down like that but as I say it's entirely up to you to decorate that center as you like you could even put doodles on the spaces and in between as well so you continue you know tally however you want to do it so I'm just going to finish mine off just to show you at the end of the video and uh, I hope that you've enjoyed drawing this mandala and uh, I'll be back with some other drawing sessions soon.